30 second, what's the difference between a trust and a will? Sure, well, virtually a will will guarantee going to probate. A will, a will says who you are, who your heirs are, and then who gets what. But it doesn't get it to them. So the trust, okay. your assets are actually in there, and so you don't go through that whole court, court process, which which I could talk about more. But you're you're short circuiting or getting around that whole process. But with a will, basically, you're guaranteed going to probate a properly funded trust. You're almost guaranteed not to. Ken Angst, Hope Properties Envy, the Angst Real Estate Team. Hey, we're uh, back here with Kevin Bertinell again. How are you doing, Kevin? Good, good to see good. you. Same here. Um, we're still doing uh, another uh, uh, episode on asset protection, but we're going to kind of move away from the importance of LLCs, and we're going to talk about trusts and how to set up a trust, uh, why set up a trust, and uh, a lot of people out there don't have them. But Kevin is very affordable and he can do a good job for you and he has the ability to do an LLC and a trust simultaneously. So Kevin, if you can kind of talk to my clients uh, about the importance of a trust, what kind of goes in there and what kind of, uh, you know, costs, approximately costs are they talking? Just to kind of give some our viewers an idea. Okay. Okay. So, so look at the trust is like a bucket. So you create this document and then it's a bucket. So then you put the assets in, that's called funding the trust. Now, the trust is, it's still all your assets. You can do whatever you want with them. But in the trust, you dictate also what happens if you become incapacitated, but also what happens when you pass away. If you have a trust and then a power of attorney and healthcare documents, you don't need somebody to be a guardian or a conservator if something happens. But what's even more important, when you pass away, first you avoid probate. Probate's an extremely public process. Anyone can go online and look at anyone's probate case, which means they can look at all the assets you have, all of your heirs, and then even how much they're going to get. Now, can you kind of go into uh, what probate costs and what the timetable on that? That's kind of what's surprising to people. And, and what is that process? Some judge or in the state of Nevada or wherever your assets are at decides what? Okay, well first, um, if you have real estate but you don't have a trust, you have to have a probate in every state they have real estate. But okay, it's a court process. There's a special department in Washoe and in other, every other county where it's basically starting a case that gets filed on behalf of your estate. And the goal of that is to make sure your debts get paid, make sure assets get transferred properly, et cetera, make sure all these rules are followed. But there's all these time frames in there. So the average probate probably takes about a full year. And most of the time, there's no distributions during that time. And then the expense can range anywhere from say, 6,000 up to, I, I've been involved in ones that are hundreds of thousands. Okay, so can you tell, I, I'm not gonna pin you to a, an exact cost, but what does it cost to set up a trust in your experience? Kind of give a range. A trust for say a single person, is somewhere between 1,500 to 2,500 normally. Um, for a married couple, it's usually around 2,500 or it can go a little higher. Depends on how many assets they have or how complicated they get. Now with a trust though, remember, you can dictate how your beneficiaries are going to receive the money. You don't want an 18 year old to receive a 500,000 or millions. Point. You can spread it out over time. If, if they have maybe drug problems or other issues, you can put um, hurdles in there or, or protection so that they won't blow their money or so that they won't get it until they're better or are back on their feet. So they, so they would really benefit from it. Okay, so um, another question I get a lot is, I only have $40,000 and I own a house. Is that someone, I hear that a lot from people, like I don't have a lot of money, is that someone that needs a trust? And I can tell you, yes, for sure, but why would someone that $40,000 and a house need a trust? Well, without a trust, what's going to happen is you're going, if you're married, once the second one of you dies, for example, you will have to go through probate in order to deal with the house, either get it sold and split the money or transfer it to your heirs. You have to, and so you have that, so again, you have the delay, you have a bunch of additional expense you have to go through, and just so between the delays, the cost, the heartaches, the family members getting mad because they're not getting their money, right. which is, I see that literally every day in what I do, um, it's, it's astronomical, the difference. Just to give you an example, I have one client where I did a trust for this woman, um, she passed away. I had another client who came to see me, but passed away before he did anything. He was dragging his feet. One of them, the administration to assist them in getting away to their house and everything was a thousand dollars. The other one was twenty six thousand dollars. Okay, so, so it's the same value of the estate. So yeah, so everyone out there needs to keep in mind that 
that $2,500 up front that you can invest is well worth it. Peace of mind. So, and then the other thing that uh, a lot of people don't, you know, does this, does a trust cover when you become incapacitated? Like you have a, a heart attack, God forbid, or something, and you're not able to talk for yourself. Is that within a trust? Yes, if a well-written trust has provisions first when you pass away, of course, but also if you become incapacitated. So if you have that, and then a power of attorney and your healthcare documents, that will, nobody has to go to court, like I said, to be appointed as your guardian or conservator. Everything is already there. So you're saving a ton of money and a ton of difficulties and heartache for your loved ones that would otherwise have to go through court to get appointed to deal with, with you and your assets. Okay, so the last point, because I deal with a lot of uh, millennials or people having kids. Uh, the biggest question I always ask people are, what is the story with your kids if something happens to both of you, uh, both the mom and the dad? Is that, where does that fall in the trust and how is that decided? Okay, technically in Nevada, that's in the will, but you designate a guardian in your will. So if, if the parents are gone, tech, the court will have to get involved, but if you have it in your will, who's supposed to get the kids and they ask to be the guardians, it's a rubber stamp sort of thing, unless okay. they're a felon or something like that, of course. But if you don't have that, you might have a relative that thinks they should be the guardian. And so if they petition the court and somebody else says, well, no, well, they really wanted me, then, then they're fighting in court over who, who should be appointed. Right. I had a case where um, it was a good friend of mine where his sister um, didn't designate and wanted him to get her daughter. <coughs> Instead, the stepdad fought for it, mainly, they think, primarily because there are $2 million in life insurance, right. and which would go with the kid, and he didn't want to give that up. So it's, you know, if, if, you're not, if you don't care about your kids, then don't do anything. But, um, now, what? that's a good point. I mean, I get that a lot as people don't have how their kids know. What is the difference between a trust and a will? Because I have a lot of clients who are like, oh, I did this online uh, will. I'm fine. Everything's going to transfer. Can you tell us just like a 30 second, what's the difference between a trust and a will? Sure. Well, virtually a will will guarantee going to probate. A will, a will says who you are, who your heirs are, and then who gets what. But it doesn't get it to them. So the trust, okay. your assets are actually in there. And so you don't go through that whole court, court process, which which I can talk about more. But you're you're short circuiting, you're getting around that whole process. But with a will, basically, you're guaranteed going to probate a properly funded trust. You're almost guaranteed not to. Okay, so uh, I hope this helps everyone. The importance, and we see it. We've worked together on some uh, tough cases mm -hmm. where uh, no no trust in play. Uh, the the lady became incapacitated, and then it's just kind of a mess on trying to get all that squared away. So. Um, if you have any other questions uh, regarding a trust or an LLC, Kevin's one of our preferred providers. I will put your information on the, uh, on the YouTube page for people to contact you. And then you guys can always call me with any questions that I can pass them along. And also leave comments. Uh, Kevin said that he'll more than happy uh, you know, answer any questions left in the uh, comment section. So thanks okay. for coming right. in. Thanks, I appreciate your information. Thanks, and uh, we'll be back next week. We have some other special guests. And until then, you guys have a good week. Thanks.